quick everybody, Adam's coming with another unboxing and review of the new Woody, the Pixar Spotlight series from Mattel. This is the latest wave of figures by Mattel called Pixar, the Spotlight series, and our second figure we get to review thanks to Mattel. Thank you so much Mattel for sending this over. We are very excited to open this up on the channel. Woody is one of the most beloved characters from all of the Pixar films, so it is no surprise that we are getting him next in the Pixar Spotlight series. Looking at the side of the packaging, we have a brief description about the Spotlight series. The Pixar Spotlight series shines a light on the iconic characters created by the artists and storytellers at Pixar through incredible details inside and out, from the ultra poseable figure to special creators, insights, and beyond. Moving to the back of the packaging, we have a great illustration of Woody and a description that reads, Woody was inspired by the cowboy shows and commercials of 1950s TV, but during development, we always had to consider that he was not an actual cowboy. He was a cowboy toy. Every element down to how he approached solving problems was filtered through the very idea that he was a toy. Moving to the bottom of the box, we have some more illustrations of Woody and the character designer, Ralph Eggleston. Here is the Rootness Tootness Cowboy out of the packaging, and he looks fantastic. I was super surprised because I thought he was actually going to be um, all soft goods throughout and no posability. I thought he was going to be kind of lanky like all the other Woodies we've kind of seen in the past, but no, he has soft goods over a uh, opposable body, so super surprised about that. Woody also comes with an interchangeable head, kind of like a shocked or surprised scared look. It is a ball and socket you just pop it off and put it right back on he also comes with two interchangeable hands a thumbs up and a little fist like kevin woody also comes with a stand a pixar ball with four pegs on there and then also a post that will hold his body in place also inside of the box we have another card pixar spotlight series on the back side we have a illustration of bud lucky it says 1995 bud is a uh, artist and actor who worked on Toy Story and other Pixar films. The trend continues with inserts. This one is a Woody's Roundup insert as seen in Toy Story 2. And then on the back side, we have a little sheriff star, which indicates Woody with a spotlight coming down on it. Let's take a closer look at the paint application, starting with Woody's head. We have nice painted on eyebrows, painted eyes, rosy little cheeks, painted mouth, and a nice little grin throughout. Top of Woody's head is also painted all the way through that nice brown color. Moving down to his soft goods, starting with his torso, we have that nice red bandana, his cow print vest, a plastic sheriff star, two painted white buttons, and his famous checkered long sleeve tee. A beautifully sculpted steer belt buckle, a leather looking belt. We have printed stitches starting from the groin to the kneecaps and a beautifully denim washed pants. Making our way down to the boots, we have a stitch looking cactus on both sides of the boots. We have a gold looking spurs. We have articulation that starts here at the toes as well as some stitching on the side. And guess what? A snake is actually in the boot. Just kidding, no snake in the boot. As we make our way to the right-handed side of Woody, we have a gun holster with a badge and some frills coming off the side. We have a printed wrist cuff as well as stitching and just enough room to place a match in there. Looking at Woody's back, we can see his tied bandana, the back of the cowhide vest, and his drawstring. However, his drawstring doesn't actually draw, it is stitched to the back of the vest. Moving on down, we have nice little belt loops, that leather belt. We have printed on stitches on the back pockets as well as behind the knees. And then making our way down to the boots, you can see those spurs. Something I like to point out is if you lift up this vest here, there is a Velcro attached to his shirt. So you can actually open up this Velcro here, which um, from what I've seen will add a little bit of give. So it'll help you uh, kind of stretch out those sleeves a little bit more. So if you attach the Velcro kind of on the ends right here, that'll give you a little bit more uh, stretch on the sleeves when you're actually doing some posing. And then you can see his hollow plastic body there. Now let's move into some articulation, starting with his upper body at his left arm. Now you want to remember that his entire articulation is wrapped around these soft goods. So you don't want to pull anything too fast or too quick. You know, you want to easily pose this figure because you don't want to bust any stitches like from Toy Story 2. 
So we're going to look at the articulation here. We have a ball and socket joint. You can see as I pull, the soft goods pull with it. So that's why we kind of want to be careful. So we have ball and socket all the way rotation here. Looks like he can move his arm up. Yeah. So this is all one piece here. So as some of this moves up, you might want to kind of push some of this up along the way to help give a little bit more reach on in the sleeves here. So arms can raise up just like so. Stitches are still there. Good. And then coming on down. Now we can't do an entire 360 degree around because it, again, it is a stitched with soft goods, but we can bring that arm up nice and lateral. We can bring it backwards a little bit. So again, up here by the shoulders, ball and socket, down by the elbow, below the bicep, we have a, a point of access that's gonna go forward and backwards. So kind of match up what you see with these stitches here. So where the stitches are at is basically where your flexion is gonna be. So you can do a hyperextension moving backwards and then also a, a, a flexion moving forward. Moving into the wrist, you can see there is a joint right here. So we have flexion moving forwards and backwards. So we can hyperextend that wrist pretty far back. That's pretty impressive. And then we have some flexion uh, moving forward about that far. The wrist can also rotate all the way around 360 degrees. Now we'll move into the lower extremities here at the base of the hips. There seems to be a ball and socket here. So we have a good rotation all the way around as much as his uh, pants will give us. So that's actually pretty cool. And then we can bring these legs all the way forward so you can be in a seated position. And we can bring these legs backwards a little bit as much as uh, the pants will give us, which seems to be about there. So it seems like the glutes might stop it just a tad. Okay, moving into the knees, we have the same type of articulation here from the elbows that we do in the knees. So we can bring these legs on forward, about so. Let's see here, about that much flexion forward and then moving backwards, he can bring those legs on back in a kind of a running sprinting position. Moving into the boots, we have rotation, 360 degrees all the way around. And then we have a little bit of flexion inside the boots going forwards and backwards, a little bit left to right as well. So we move that around. And then here at the base of the ankle, we have a ball and socket. We can do some flexion moving forward about that far. It's about as far as the boot will give us. And then hyperextension moving backwards. It's about as far back as he can go there. So that's great. Rotation all the way around. And then we also have a joint here at the toe tips. So we can bring that up and give us some more character as if he's resting his foot upon something. Now we'll interchange the heads and the hands. So we'll take his hat off. All you have to do is just give it a nice pull. Head comes off there. We'll take his scared or unsured head and place it right back on. Apply a little bit of pressure and then we'll put his hat right back on. Voila. His hands are the exact same concept. All you have to do is give it a little pull. The hand comes out. We can interchange his left hand with the fist that they gave us. Give it a nice firm push and there it is. Now we'll swap out his right hand, pull it out just like so, give him the thumbs up, push it in, and voila. Now let's do some measurements for Woody. I have him standing as tall as I possibly can get him, and it looks like he is standing at about nine and a half inches, which is pretty cool. It's not bad at all, because I think in the movie he's about 15 inches or so. Now let's take a look at Woody's wingspan or his arms all the way out. So from fingertips on the right hand side to about fingertips on the left hand side, I'm thinking we're about nine and a quarter inches. Let's do some comparisons with some other figures that we have. Here is Kevin from the Spotlight series, which we previously reviewed. She stands tall 13 inches, so she definitely towers over Woody. We have a 112 scale 6 inch Stormtrooper from the Black series. Next up, we have World of Halo Master Chief 3.75 inch scale. Since we don't have Bullseye, we'll put Blue in there, an Amber Collection, 112 scale, Velociraptor. Next up, we'll put the Legacy Collection, Rexy. Okay, my final thoughts on the new Pixar Spotlight series, Woody Articulated Figure. Again, another home run from Mattel. We are two for two from this series. My favorite parts about this figure are going to be the soft goods over the articulated body. I think that is a huge selling point for this figure. Uh, we don't have anything that I've seen in the past that is an articulated body with soft goods over it. It's either a very lanky, you know, plush type of figure or it's just a, a hard plastic figure. With that being said, they did a great job mimicking his movements from the film and bringing it to a figure standpoint. What I mean by that is in the film, you can see his arm is, you know, he's 
supposed to be like a plush type of doll and his arms can free flow and move all over forwards and backwards so his articulation is almost the same thing obviously a lot stiffer so he can bring that arm hyper extend backwards and also bring it forward same thing with his legs so he has a body that was built for woody's articulation and his articulation only you couldn't take this type of, of figure and apply that articulation to Buzz because that's not how Buzz works. That's not how he, his body moves in the actual film. He moves like an actual action figure. Woody has more of a free flow. Woody can hyperextend his elbows backwards and his knees, but Buzz can't do that type of, of, of movement. That's just incredible creativity and attention to detail. But it's also a little bit of a double-edged sword. As I've been posing him, I found that he is a little bit more susceptible to kind of falling over a little bit. Just because he has those breaks, his, his leg can go forward or backwards either way. So you have to kind of pose him just right. It's not every time he falls over, but he's a little bit more susceptible to falling that way. But that just comes with the territory being able to mimic a plush type of doll. Either way, that shouldn't stop you from adding this piece to your collection. It is a fantastic figure, and if you're even remotely a Toy Story fan or a Woody fan, you gotta have it. These are priced at $40, and they will be hitting Mattel's store online exclusively this fall. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check me out on Instagram. My name is Nostalgic Adam, all one word, where I do toy photography, toy hunts, toy videos, and all things toy related. Link in the description below. And if you haven't checked out my review and unboxing of Kevin, Check that out as well. Link in the description. And I will see y'all in the next video.